Hello everyone and welcome back to the Second Party Podcast. I wanted to start off today by talking about something that's been in the news recently. I'm not a big fan of talking about celebrity drama, but I think it speaks to something deeper in this case. Recently, as, as my wife here made me aware, Adam Levine was accused by an Instagram influencer by the name of Sumner Stroh of cheating on his wife, specifically with her. Yeah, well, it came up because there's this video going around. I think it was a TikTok, but I, I'm not on TikTok. I don't hate myself. So I saw it on Twitter where she was basically talking about that and shared some screenshots of messages with him and talking about how they had had an affair and she was oh so young and naive and then to make matters worse not only did did she have this affair and she shared some screenshots of his messages to her Mm -hmm. but like it ended somehow i don't know if she ended it i don't know what happened but she was saying it ended and then several months went by and she got a message from him which is what she was sharing a screenshot of Mm -hmm. where he basically was asking her for permission to name his soon to be born son after her born by his wife by his by his wife who the two of them had an affair on no that's not the right phrasing against (laughs) against whatever sure yeah yeah so she was She had this TikTok she put out, and it that's how this got out. She was saying in this video that she had shared screenshots of messages with him to some of her friends. Yeah. And one of the friends was trying to sell it to the press or something. So that's why she felt like she had to make this TikTok. And, like, she was the one who actually broke the news, I think, because she was trying to get ahead of, like, whatever press release. I don't know. Sure. But that's how I... It was going around Twitter the other day. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just get the obvious out of the way. If this is true, both Adam Levine and the Sumner Stroh woman are kind of terrible people. And they betrayed his wife. They both knew her or knew of her. They're both obviously culpable. They're untrustworthy. They're terrible. And they're crazy each in their own specific little way. Her for sending screenshots to one of her friends and him for wanting to name his child after her, which is absolutely bananas. And both of them for having an affair, but... (laughs) Yeah, but one of the the parts of this that I thought was, was so interesting and why I kind of wanted to talk about it has to do with a part of the story that is not really getting headlines or not being talked about from what I've seen. And that's that Adam Levine's wife happens to be a Victoria's Secret model. Okay. I don't know very much about her at all. I I don't, I know nothing about her except that she was in that one Adam Levine music video, Maroon 5, whatever. Yeah. So I don't really know much about her either, but I think that the fact that she's a Victoria's Secret model, which is, you know, by by most general societal measures, that's like some of the pinnacle of like good looking types of people, right? Oh, sure. Like if you're a celebrity, that's like yeah, like th- the lofty goal, what everyone wants. Like yeah. Victoria's Secret model kind of thing. I mean, literally the word model is something to aspire to. Yeah. Okay. So he's married to the type of woman that at least presumably physically, which by the way, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a picture of her, but I'm just assuming given oh. the position. Except in the, the music video. Okay, sure. <laughs> I, I don't remember it at all. Okay. But regardless, she's in this position of lots of value being sought after, and yet he's still cheating, which I found very... Inter- or he's allegedly still cheating, which I found really interesting. And this kind of runs parallel, or has a lot of parallels, to another story that I heard about recently. Apparently in the last couple of years, um, another high-caliber model by the, name of em- by the name of Emily Ratajkowski, 
who I believe she was featured in like some music video and she was in one of our favorite movies actually Gone Girl not as a main character she's she's kind of oh a, really I didn't know she was in that yeah okay she's kind of a like a secondary character she's the character who spoiler alert for Gone Girl um, we don't need to say who it was it's fine okay. she's a secondary character <laughs> okay okay recently or somewhat recently her and her husband who uh, have a child together um, she filed for divorce and it was specifically because he was cheating and we'll throw a picture up on the screen for those of you for those of you who are watching on YouTube uh, I don't think that he's a bad looking guy but many online will say like oh he's this is an example of some very good looking attractive woman dating an ugly guy wait and she filed for divorce yeah because he was cheating exactly yes okay so another instance where this this like top level in terms of professional model is being cheated on by somebody else but now in this case it's even more uh there's even more of a popularity or monetary imbalance here is he just it, like a random person he's not like a celebrity on his own or uh he's in the hollywood industry um he actually helped produce um, another another movie that we really like with Robert Pattinson, uh, Good Time or Good Times. Oh, okay. Uh, so he is in Hollywood, but he's not like a yeah like big name person like he's, Adam Levine. He's not an actor. Yeah. He's yeah, I think he he like owns a production company or he, he's more okay. on the production and casting side of things. Oh, he he just looks like a like a normal guy. It's not like he's bad looking. He's just He's kind of normal looking to me. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a normal looking dude. Looks like he's decently tall. Has a fine, fair physique, right? So, but people are saying because of the stark differential, there many online are saying like, oh, he's like an ugly dude and people are making TikToks basically saying, oh, if Emily Ratajkowski, if this attractive model type personality okay can't get a man and have him not cheat on her what am i supposed to do right i thought this was kind of funny because there was kind of an embedded premise of oh if we can make it so that this person can't cheat then they won't and i thought that was very similar to kind of what bill burr was talking about in one of his specials where um, he, he was going back even further than we are talking about Tiger Woods cheating on his wife and all of, pe all of these people, all these talking heads on TV ridiculing him for doing this. And he basically said, yeah, well, you can ridicule him all you want, but you've never been in that position where you have all of these options. And he basically said, the only reason that you haven't cheated on your spouse or whomever is because you've never been given the opportunity to do so. Bill Burr said that. Like, yeah. In a joking around. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's also um, a false dichotomy between like attractiveness and likelihood of not being cheated on. Well, I mean, I think there there definitely is some some tie that one could make there because I'm sure if you're more attractive, you have more options. As a generalized rule, No, I'm saying right? not being cheated on if you are attractive. Oh, sure. Like, it's a false dichotomy between someone being attractive and the likelihood that their partner or spouse will not cheat on them. Sure. I don't know that yeah, that's, I mean... like, increased attractiveness means increased chance of not being cheated on. I don't know that that is the case. Okay, yeah. But implicit in those comments you're talking about is also an assumption of yeah. that. Yeah. Actually, in response to Bill Burr's comedy special, Jordan Peterson kind of commented on that and extrapolated it out a little bit further to, you know, if you take somebody who is harmless or they have no ability to do something wrong in a given instance, and then they don't do something wrong, 
he said there's not anything virtuous about that. Right. And he made the case that what you, what's actually virtuous is having the ability to do something, having the ability to act or do something negative and not. And I think that that's, I think that that's probably right. So taking that and applying it to a couple of these instances, I kind of think about, like, obviously this is a bad thing to be doing, right? Cheating. But, yeah. But it really demonstrates a lack of loyalty, among other things. Oh, yeah, for sure. Of, like, the utmost kind. I mean, this yeah. is an instance where you've, you've literally, supposedly committed yourself to a person and mm -hmm. entered into like a covenant relationship with them mm -hmm. and you're just throwing it out the window yeah i i think it's like maybe maybe this is like the principal instance of lack of loyalty and, and betrayal right at least that we see like nowadays cheating yeah cheating infidelity on your spouse. yeah infidelity okay. yeah quite quite possibly because what other societal institutions do we have that are as in principle or in theory binding and covenantal as a marriage? Yeah. So I was thinking if, if there's never been an instance where you could be disloyal in some way, then can one really say that they are loyal? So basically taking what Jordan Peterson was extrapolating from Bill sure. Burr and, and applying it to loyalty instead of virtuousness or goodness. Sure. I mean, what would that mean, like not have the ability to be disloyal to someone? So loyalty can apply to a whole litany of things, right? Loyalty to a spouse, loyalty to a set of ideals or principles loyalty to your country what have you right so you could take somebody who has never had the opportunity to be disloyal to their country and i guess what i'm asking is do you think that in that situation can we say for certain whether that person is or is not loyal specifically when applied to like one's country and i guess what i would say is like we don't really know yet Okay, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think loyalty is only truly tested when you have a chance to be disloyal, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So we've been talking a lot about, like, loyalty here, right? And I think it's, I think that we should clarify a little bit of, of what we're talking about. So let's read through the definition of loyal. It reads... Steadfast in allegiance to one's homeland, government, or sovereign, or faithful to a person, ideal, custom, cause, or duty. So from this standpoint, I think something that's, that's key to recognize about loyalty is that it's not necessarily a moral good in and of itself, right? Because you could be loyal to something bad. Like, I'm sure that there sure. were plenty of yeah, loyal Nazis, but this is clearly a bad thing, right? Yeah, right. But it does seem to me, at least, that some degree of loyalty is necessary for virtue. Because I mean, if because you have to be loyal to your values? Yeah. If you can't remain or if you aren't loyal to your values, then how can you be morally good in that sure. in that sense but being loyal to your values by itself is not necessarily virtuous because correct if you're bad if your values are bad then <laughs> correct so loyalty is not necessarily good in and of itself but it does seem to be at least to some degree a prerequisite for virtue or a component of yeah or necessary for continued true virtue maybe yeah yeah i think because of this, you know, when we look at that definition and we say that loyalty is kind of a prerequisite for virtuousness or goodness, I think something that we've really lost in our society is seeing loyalty as a prerequisite for a relationship. And when I say a prerequisite for a relationship, I don't just mean 
like a romantic type of relationship. I'm even talking about like friend relationships. I guess it's somewhat situationally dependent because, and it depends on how exactly you're applying the idea of loyalty in the, in the exact instance, because what does loyalty to a friend mean? That's a good question. Like that you're not going to, what? I mean, I think it would be, it doesn't just be that you always support them and agree with them all the time. Well, I think that it would, I agree that it's not that you would always support and agree with them. But I do think that it would be, I would phrase it something along the lines of, you are always giving advice and looking out for their best interests. So As they, opposed to turning against them or as opposed to even something as simple as just having a friendship dissolve or not being friends with them anymore? Like if a friendship fades away, is that both parties were disloyal to the other because they just, they didn't keep perpetuating the friendship. I wouldn't say that there is loyalty or disloyalty. I would say it's loyalty neutral. When I say that you're looking out for the best interests of the person, I mean, like, let's take, for example, if I had a friend come to me and they were going to do something like that wasn't good for them or that was self-destructive right they they came to me and they're like hey i think i'm gonna take up smoking i don't know what friend comes to you and says that but if they let's just let's just say that they did if you said oh yeah like i'm i always support you you're great you should do what you want live your best life these things that we hear nowadays i don't think that that's actually a like truly what is that? I think it's rain. Sorry, we just took a pause. It uh, started raining here, so sorry if the audio quality <laughs> just uh, got a lot worse it there. It just kind of thunderstormed out of nowhere. It's There's raining very hard. Nothing in the forecast, out of nowhere, and it yeah. really started coming down. And it's coming down hard. And believe it or not, we don't have a uh, professional tier audio studio. <laughs> yeah, perfectly insulated, a dedicated room underground, no. Anyways... <laughs> What were we talking about? <laughs> I think we were talking about friends and... Loyalty to a friendship. Loyalty what to a friendship. Like? Yeah, so I think it would be... You'd be showing loyalty to that person, to that friendship, to say, no, this isn't good for you, this isn't in your best interests. Right? Because the ultimate good or the ultimate... Yeah, the ultimate good for that person is to not smoke and you should be allied with that and you should be loyal to that the good of the person that you claim to care about not pleasing them in the short term i guess i also see it as like loyalty is kind of the opposite of betrayal so not Mm -hmm. not betraying someone's trust would be being loyal to them yeah but I, I do think it's a little bit different if we're talking about a friendship or a company or something. Like, marriage is unique because there's a very specific type of agreement that goes into it. Mm-hmm. And if you're cheating on someone, like, that's a, that's a very obvious, direct, tangible way we can say you're being disloyal to them. You're breaking that trust, breaking, like, that, that covenant yeah, I think it's interesting that, like, the betrayal side of things, in almost all instances, that is, like, a moral wrong, right? It's a form of lying. Betraying is oftentimes... It's not necessarily lying. Betrayal. Like, it's betrayal if you break someone's trust, right? Like, if they confide in you about something, and you you share it with someone you shouldn't, or... I guess I would say that there's like an implied social contract there to not share that thing. No, that's fine. That's that's n- nowhere close to like a marriage contract. Or I know a marriage but covenant. I'm not saying they're they're equally bad. I'm just saying betrayal is almost always like I, I would contend that betrayal is almost always 
morally on the bad side. Well, and I think I think part of loyalty is predicated on you. You kind of touched on this earlier with trust, but on like honesty as well. Yeah. And being forthright with like your your intentions and things. I think that you know to to understand true loyalty or where someone's true loyalties lie, you have to understand who they are. Because when I understand you, I understand there's a hierarchy of loyalty, right? So between us, like there's at the top is like, okay, I'm loyal to God. And then I'm loyal to my spouse. And then I'm loyal to, you know, my, let's say country. And then I'm loyal to my company. And then not your family anywhere in there. <laughs> I'm just throwing out generalized categories and somewhere in there, there's, there's friends, right? So you kind of have to understand that hierarchy of loyalty with someone. I, th- I think that that's something that's seriously lost in our society today. Like I see, I see people all the time and they have friends that like they themselves will say, oh yeah, like this person kind of like that. You can't trust them with a secret or they talk a lot or they're going to share this thing or I wouldn't trust them with my whatever. And to me, that's like, it, it really astounds me because I see loyalty as just like a prerequisite to, to any type of relationship. At least some degree of loyalty. Yeah. And, and like, if you're going to be a close friend, like think about, a think about the couple of really close guy friends that I have. Okay. Mm-hmm. They are unbelievably, incredibly loyal friends. Yeah, it's like you call them up at any any time. Like they'll be there for you if you yeah. need, if you need someone. Yeah, and they're gonna tell me what they think from a from like my best interest standpoint. They're gonna be brutally honest with me. They're they're not like yes men. Yeah, they're just gonna be clear, and that's something that I just I see I see people so much nowadays having these friends that are just always quote unquote supporting them, which just says, Oh yeah. Like do whatever it is that you want to do in this very moment. Like that's what the whole yes, queen, whatever meme is, right? Oh yeah. Go live your truth or the, the, what's the new phrase? Uh, live your best life. Like live your best life is not speaking to, Oh yes. Have, have a life full of meaning and make sacrifices today for the betterment of yourself in the future and always be loyal to your friends. Like that's not what that is speaking to. That's speaking to the YOLO impulsive pleasure that somebody wants to be validated about in a given moment so that they can make a bad decision and not feel quite as bad about it right now. So I guess I'm contending that we have an epidemic of disloyal people and disloyal friends. There's a serious scarcity of loyalty. And that's something that I think we we ought to bring back. I don't know that that's new. That's just like human nature. That's been around as long as time has been around. I'm going to play devil's advocate. I think that loyalty has significantly gone down recently. Okay, there's no great way to measure this, so it's just kind of you're based right. on how you're thinking about it. You're right, but but think about think about back in the day, okay? You would have these very loyal, trustworthy neighbors. You'd have these tight knit communities. What do you mean by back in the day? Like the '60s. Oh, see, I'm thinking about like 800 BC. Okay. So... <laughs> well, I can't. I don't know that (laughs) that's so long ago. I I really don't know. I'm talking like, like back when our parents were, were young, like in the sixties, the fifties to the seventies in that time, you had very tight knit church communities. You had people with very loyal friends. You had, especially in, in friendships, I think people would like call each other out on things a lot more. 
I think that there was not all of this, this betrayal. And maybe some of it is because your ability and your reach to get other friends was so much lower, right? Like you had a reputation in it town wasn't the internet. of being disloyal. Because of that, people were you know, motivated to be more loyal. But yeah, I don't know. I, regardless. It's hard for me to say because... I, w- I wasn't there, and I don't know how you would, sure. like, empirically measure that. It, like, it's that's such a subjective thing about what you ex- have or haven't experienced. I don't know how you'd measure yeah. loyalty over time. I guess my point is just, it's not by itself a new phenomenon. Sure. I, could, I can see that. I guess, how's this? I would say, then, that people ought to have loyalty as a priority in relationships, whether that be friendships or uh, romantic relationships. Loyalty should be substantially higher as a priority, if not a prerequisite, in my opinion. And people should maybe not feel so good and virtuous themselves for being oh so loyal if they haven't actually had an opportunity to be disloyal yeah is that another yeah that's a good point you know you can sit here and and say oh my gosh i would i would never cheat on my spouse and i would never blah blah blah, whatever and it's like you can really mean that and that can be true you really never would but Mm -hmm. in another sense until or unless you really get the op say an opportunity to do so Mm -hmm. and you look that opportunity in the face and you actually come to a fork in the road and you choose the right the right one Mm -hmm. like that's when your your actions confirm what you actually are saying you believe yeah that got me thinking about um you told me a story recently where you went to see uh one of your friends and they told you that one of our kind of less close friends or acquaintances was pregnant, but then she said, Oh, (laughs) she's like, but I don't know. I I didn't didn't tell tell you. you. Don't, you don't know this, whatever. And then I had seen them. I was going to see this whole group the next day Mm -hmm. um, for a, a baby shower. And I saw, yeah, this other couple that was like, that was pregnant, was pregnant. Yeah. and it was very brand new and like i got from what i knew no one was supposed to know mm-hmm. so i was like okay i guess it's like i don't know so you acted like you didn't I was know. like i guess i have to act like i don't know because your friend told you you need to yeah. act like you <laughs> she don't told know. me i didn't tell you this and i was like okay well and it's yeah it's not like i would lie if it directly came up sure. but it was just like i'm not gonna go up to them and be like oh my gosh, congratulations, you know, I yeah. heard. It's like, I'm going to wait for you to tell me kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not necessarily defending my friend for telling me this if she wasn't supposed to, but... Yeah. Yeah, then it was just kind of awkward because I was having a conversation with them and they kept, like kind of kept making comments that was like not discreet You're about kind of that adjacent fact. to... Yeah, and I was just like feeling awkward, perfect, like... Yeah. uh Okay, should I I be like, hey, I know that you're pregnant. Like, it seems like they're acting as if I know, but I also don't know if they're just like saying things elusively to like, you know, sometimes people say things because they want you to ask questions. Like they purposely say something that's like question begging yeah, or vague because they want you to ask them about it. They're like almost prompting you to ask the question. Yeah, I didn't really know what was going on. But so finally they said that, oh, you know, we're, we're pregnant or we're due, due this day or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's so great. You know, congratulations. I'm really happy for Good you guys. Good to hear. Yeah. yeah. And, and the guy was like, looked me in the face. He's a very blunt person, like very blunt, very yeah. like disagreeable kind of uh, rugged man kind of dude. He, Super like, looked, nice. But yeah, he's, he looked he's me in the face and he was like, you already knew that. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't even know what to say. I was like, yeah, actually I did know. Like my friend told me, like this person told me yesterday. And and then my and then the friend who told me was like sitting was close by when this happened. 
and was like, oh, yeah, I told them that you knew. And I was like, seriously, why didn't you, like, tell me? Like, I'm sitting here feeling all awkward. Like, I'm supposed to be pretending like I don't know. Yeah. And that, But then they know I know. But I don't know that they know that I know. And it's just... Yeah. Yeah. What? So that was not a good example of being honest. But you were loyal. loyal. I, I... Yeah, that's true. I was loyal, even though she probably... Either she should not have told me if she wasn't supposed to, or I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I was thinking too about, I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but in my first job, my first like W2 type job, um, I wasn't having like a super great time. I was, you know, got the job in high school, you know, a typical type of food service job that, that you get as your first job. And, uh, kind of wanted to quit and go somewhere else, but I thought about it and I thought, man, you know, like I've really worked with these people for a while and I kind of built up a relationship with them and, uh, you know, I don't want to quit on them and I want to remain like kind of loyal to the company. It's only so much longer jumping ship, trying to go somewhere else. It seems kind of, you know, disloyal. And I thought, and I continue to believe I'm, I'm really happy that I did this. I stuck around at the company, even though. I probably could have gone somewhere else to make some more money, but I really felt like having one job on my resume, having been there for like over a year, year and a half, something like that would really demonstrate like a loyalty or a dependability and that I wasn't just going to jump ship at some other point. And, um, you know, it's funny, even to this day, um, like one of the, one of the managers, the person who hired me on at that job, uh, I'll, we'll still go back in there every so often and they'll recognize me and like they'll, they'll manage or comp our meal and stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's the best when we get yeah. free meals. And I just think like, you know, maybe that would have happened even if I had left six months earlier or something like that. But I look at stuff like that and I think re- real relationships can really only be built off of a structure of loyalty of that dependability right if you're gonna leave on a whim then how am i gonna trust you here and i think that the relationship that i have with my old boss my old manager even if it's even if we don't catch up a ton i think that loyalty speaks volumes even years later that's what i've seen at least so shame on adam levine shame on his mistress shame on mr average looking dude who cheated on his model wife is that the that's the conclusion that and i think that loyalty should be a prerequisite to relationships. I think that should be something that people are looking for and putting up as kind of a barrier to entry for relationships with them, whether that be friendships or romantic relationships, business relationships, anything like that. I think there needs to be some degree of of loyalty that all of those are based in. But with that, it's getting late. Recently, I've been musing about high school graduation parties a little while back we were going to a bunch of them and i remember thinking to myself and and i held this position when i was graduating high school as well that high school graduation parties are are kind of stupid in my opinion at least in the type of community that that i grew up in it was basically an expectation that everyone was to graduate high school now i went to a a smaller school that was you know pretty rigorous so the people I was around you know ha- had an investment in it and that was expected of them as well so I recognize that this isn't necessarily true in all instances and for some it, it definitely can and should be a celebration but at least for those who are going to go off to college or who it wasn't you know difficult graduating high school I, I don't really understand why 
we celebrate it with this big party. And then ironically, the, th the accomplishment of graduating college, which at least in my opinion is for most people substantially more difficult and substantially smaller portion of the population actually completes, we have little or no celebration apart from just the, the standard ceremony. So I guess all that to say, I think that we should do away with high school graduation parties, at least in most instances. Maybe celebrate things that are difficult accomplishments for the person who we're celebrating with. But that's just what I've been musing about. Thank you again for listening. If you have any thoughts on loyalty or high school graduation parties, anything else, we'd love to hear them. Feel free to send us an email at secondpartypodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to address it. Thank you again. Have a good night.